Hi, welcome to the banqueting table. My name is Diana Green and I'm so glad that you've joined me today at Diana L. Green YouTube channel. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, welcome and I hope you come back. Please like and subscribe, leave a comment if you care to, so that um, this ministry can expand. You have landed at the banqueting table, an online ministry for Bible study. So with that being said, get yourself a cup of coffee. Mine says, I googled my symptoms. It turned out I just needed my grandkids. <laughs> my uh, son got this for me and my grandkids got this for me. And you know what? It's true. <laughs> Grandchildren are something special. But anyway, go grab your Bible, a notepad, a pencil or a pen, something to write with, and let's enjoy Banqueting Table Bible Study. And again, we are working from, let me grab my workbook, it's down here, Seeking Him, let me pull it back, Seeking Him, the joy, Experiencing the Joy of Personal Revival, written by Nancy DeMoss, Wagamuth, and Tim Grissom. And uh, we're going through 12 um, puzzle pieces of building a life of revival. And so we will continue with that in just a moment. Okay, if you got your Bible, a notepad, a pen, pencil, etc., and a cup of coffee, let's get ready to go over this wonderful lesson called The Gift of Repentance. I do just want to remind you that Banqueting Table exists for this reason, to break yokes, change minds, pierce hearts, and transform lives by the power of the Word of God. Turn with me over to Mark chapter 7. Put your finger at Mark chapter 7. And while you're holding your finger there at Mark chapter 7, let's pray very quickly, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you again for opening our eyes, opening our ears, opening our hearts to your word, so that by your Holy Spirit you are changing us into the image of Jesus from glory to glory and from faith to faith. In his name we give you all the praise that you are so richly due. Amen. Okay, let me read the introduction to this particular lesson out of Seeking Him, Experiencing the Joy of Personal Revival. And the lesson is on repentance. I am titling it The Gift of Repentance. It is a gift. And I really hope you see that. Matter of fact, that's my objective for this lesson. That you will see repentance as the gift that it actually is. But here's what the, um, let me put my glasses on. Ya -da -da. Here's what the writers of this uh, work study, this book study said. We've learned that humility and honesty provide the fertile ground in which seeds of grace and revival can grow and bear fruit. And that statement, fertile ground, is important. And if you've been here before, you know that we talked about breaking up the fallow ground of our hearts so that the seed of God's word can go into our core being and the rain of his presence can help us to bring forth that fruit, right? So the next step then, after humility and honesty, is responding to God's conviction in genuine repentance. The concept of repentance is largely foreign to modern minds. And then there's three questions. Just what is repentance? What is its role in the life of a child of God? And how do we know if we've truly repentant? And it says this study will explore these three questions. And it will. And if you actually get the workbook, as I said, you can find it on Amazon. You can find it on in any Christian bookstore, christianbooks.com, etc. Or you can go to Revive Our Hearts and order the, um, the Seeking Him, the Joy of Personal Revival um, from reviveourhearts.com. So we're not going to go through the workbook, obviously, for two reasons. One, because we don't have the time to do that. And number two, because this subject matter 
have you noticed the subject matters are getting a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper the puzzle pieces are fitting together but since we don't have the time for for uh, the complete workbook we are going to go over one scripture in particular and what I wanted to do was before we understand what repentance is I really wanted us to understand why we need repentance why we need repentance so if you still have your finger in Matthew chapter or Mark chapter 7 you should have your finger in Mark chapter 7 okay and I'm going to read this particular set of scriptures from three different translations because I really 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 want us to get this deep 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 into our spirits the gift of repentance and this is why we need it see if you can locate yourself in this set of scriptures <laughs> all right mark chapter 7 verses 14 to 23 mark chapter 7 verses 14 to 23 from the niv it reads like this again jesus called the crowd to him and said listen to me everyone and understand this let me give you some backstory on what he's getting ready to say and why as you know Jesus is the Savior of the world as you know he is the Messiah as you know he's the Son of God as you know he came to pay the sin debt that you and I owed God he came to make us alive again unto God the sovereign Lord the creator of all the universe this is that Jesus and so the leaders of the uh, of the religious groups, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the Sadducees, I mean, they were always hounding Jesus. I mean, literally hounding him. They would literally follow him just to catch him doing something that they didn't like. So in this case, the Pharisees came to gather around because they always did wherever Jesus was, they gathered around and they wanted to catch him doing wrong. Well, the question here in Mark chapter 7 had to do with his Jesus' disciples not washing their hands before they ate. But more importantly, it had to do with the Pharisees wanting to uphold the uh, traditions of the elders more so than upholding the word of God. That's where the tension came in. And so they were bugging him about how come your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. And they had some discourse before verse 14. So I encourage you to go back and read Mark chapter 7. But at verse 14, again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. This is the importance of whether or not they wash their hands or not. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. And after he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? He asked them, don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body and in saying this Jesus declared all foods clean and then he went on what comes out of a person is what defiles them I'll say that again what comes out of a person is what defiles them for it is from within out of a person's heart their core being that evil thoughts come now listen to what these evil thoughts lead humans to do you and me included sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, ew, ewness, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. The New Living Translation puts it like this. Same set of scriptures, Mark chapter 7, verses 14 to 23. New Living Translation. Then Jesus called the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. 
It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. I'm talking about why you and I need the gift of repentance. Verse 17, Then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd, <laughs> and his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used. Don't you understand either, he asked? Can't you see that the food you put into your body cannot defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach, listen to this, and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. If you notice what I'm doing, is that these this same set of scriptures is going to get a little more clear and um, well a little more clear as we go along so by saying this he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes and then verse 20 and then he added it is what comes from inside that defiles you for from within out of a person's heart, man or woman, boy or girl, come evil, th the man or woman, boy or girl, I added that, <laughs> come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Still talking about how come your disciples don't wash their hands. <laughs> then in the message translation, it reads like this. Well, the message paraphrase. The message Bible is a paraphrase. It's not a, tra it's not a translation. But it reads like this. It is the word. It, it explains the word of God in very everyday language. So here we go. Um verse 14 and 15 Jesus called the crowd together again and said listen now all of you take this to heart take this to heart in other words don't just push this aside take this to heart it's not what you swallow that pollutes your life it's what you vomit that's the real pollution when he was back home after being with the crowd his disciples said we don't get it Put it in plain language. Jesus said, Are you being willfully stupid? That's pretty strong. Are you being willfully stupid? Don't you see that what you swallow can't contaminate you? It doesn't enter your heart, but your stomach works its way through the intestines and is finally flushed. You really can't get much plainer than that. That took care of dietary quibbling. Jesus was saying that all foods are fit to eat. And this particular statement and all the translations I have, the paraphrase that I have here, are in parentheses. He went on to say, it's what comes out of a person that pollutes obscenities, lust, thefts, murders, adulteries, greed, depravity, deceptive dealings, carousing, mean looks, slander, arrogance, foolishness, all of these are vomit from the heart. There is the source of your pollution. That's pretty powerful and plain. They, they said, tell it to us plainly, and so he did. But that is why, my friends, you and I need this gift called repentance. And thank God <laughs> we can repent before Him when we have done these evil, wicked things. When our heart has vomited up wicked thoughts, wicked actions, and wicked words. Amen. Thank God for repentance. And I'm sure you could think of many other things to add to that list. But I say the list is sufficient. That list is sufficient. It pretty much covers all what we say, what we think, what we do. We need repentance. 
So, as I said before, when you read verses 1 to 13, you see how this conversation began. But we've seen the why we need repentance. And now let's dig into wh what. What is repentance? I would be hard-pressed to find a word in the world or the church of our Lord Jesus Christ that is more itchy than repentance. Don't you feel that? Even when I just say repentance, it makes makes you go, ooh, because we don't understand what a gift it really is. It's not something that makes you itch. It really is something that will soothe the itches in our life. Amen. This one word, repentance, it, it dredges up all kinds of feelings in human beings, whether they are followers of Christ at this moment or not, whether they know that they are um, created in God's image and in his likeness or not. And for those of us that do understand that, that word is still a little itchy, but it can be the balm of Gilead is what I say. Amen. So that's my goal today, as I said, is to uh, change your mind, <laughs> change your mind about this word repentance and hopefully take some of the sting out of it. So Repentance, simply put, is coming to the place of understanding that our mind, our mouth, and our movements need to do an about face. Our mind, our mouth, and our movements need to do an about face. And that really, in a nutshell, is what repentance is. Coming to the knowledge that our mind, or our mouth, or our movements, or all three, need to do and about face okay so you can take this quote from me um, the guilt I feel and it's an affirmation but you can use it as a quote the guilt I feel is a blessing that is designed to turn me in the right direction away from sin the guilt I feel is a blessing that is designed to turn me in the right direction away from sin amen so thank God for the gift of repentance. Now, the theological and Greek definition of repentance is these following, okay? So hang in there with me. We have a few more minutes. The Hebrew picture word for repent is spelled shin biet, and it has a powerful visual of what repentance looks like. Now, for you to see what I saw, you will have to go to the YouTube video called repent in ancient Hebrew. It just explains the word repent in ancient Hebrew and it gives a great visual and the visual that I got was Angela Bassett in the movie Waiting to Exhale <laughs> because the definition in the picture talks about burning down burning down those things that cause our mind, our mouth, and our movements to delve into sin. Burn it down and walk away. That's what the picture is. Burn the house down and walk away. Not your literal house. Don't even try it. Burn down those things that are causing your mind, your mouth, and your movement to sin and walk away. That's the Hebrew picture, but I want you to see it for yourself. So go to a YouTube, the YouTube channel. The video is called Repent in Ancient Hebrew. I think you're going to like it. And so for the sake of this lesson, I just want to make sure I, I uh, share what repentance is not. Repentance is not metamorpho. Repentance is not metamorpho. Uh, that word metamorpho, it means um, changing something from one essence to completely another, such as Jesus' transfiguration on the mountain with, um, well, Elijah was there, Moses was there, James, John, and Peter were there, and Jesus was there, and the glory of the Lord, and God was there. The cloud of the Lord came down. God was there. And he said, this is my beloved son. And uh, listen to him. And so seven persons were there. God, Jesus, Elijah, Moses, Peter, James, and John. But Jesus was the only one that was literally transfigured. That is metamorpho. 
That is not quite repentance in this, um, for the sake of this lesson. Nor is repentance metaschematizo, metaschematizo, metaschematizo. And that word describes changing something into something else. The example that was given is um, like you have a flower garden in your yard and you change it into a vegetable garden. It's still a garden, it's just a different kind of garden. So repentance is not that either for the sake of this lesson, but what it is is metaneo. Metaneo and metanoa. Metanoeo. Metanoeo. Oeo. Metanoeo and metanoia. They are the two uh, Greek words that are closely re related and they have in mind these things. They have indications of metamorpho and metaschematizo, but they have some indications of that, but they are not that. Metanoeo and metanoia are this, and this is the repentance that, the, that Jesus was talking about. Do you know? That's the first thing he said when he started his ministry. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And I got to thinking, what did they need to repent of? Well, in Mark chapter 7, it pretty much explains what human beings need to repent of. But that was his first message ever. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He met metanoio and metanoia. Metanoio means to repent with regret, accompanied by a true change of heart toward God. Metanoio, 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 repent with regret, accompanied by a true change of heart toward God. Metanoia is repentance connected to retrospection. Metanoia is repentance connected to reflecting. Reflecting back on what you may have done, what you may have said, and how your actions produced something. How you pursued that course of action and the results. Well, metanoia ta talks about us looking back at our actions. And I don't know about you, but I got some. <laughs> I've got some actions that I've had to look back on and repent for. But it's indicative that we look back and we become wiser, we become more um, intelligent, we become more mindful of the past and the future. Okay, that's a gift to be able to reflect, accept, be mindful, and move ahead. Repentance is a gift. So, how do you know that you need to turn around in your mind, your mouth, or your movements? How do you know that you need to turn around? Well, I have an example for you. <laughs> have you ever seen the Disney movie Pinocchio? Do you remember the character Jiminy Cricket? I just watched it yesterday to refresh my memory. <laughs> but Jiminy Cricket was uh, the conscience of Pinocchio. And so his job was to uh, help keep Pinocchio on the straight and narrow, to keep him focused on uh, being the, Im let me put it this way, keep him focused on walking in the image that he was proclaimed to have. I like that. Walking in the image that was proclaimed over him. And so Jiminy Cricket's job was to keep him walking in the image that was proclaimed over him. And we have been given a conscience as well. Now our conscience, our human conscience, along with the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you and keeps me walking in the image of God that's been proclaimed over us. I think that's a beautiful thing. So when we behave in a way that is against our conscience, we must repent. That's against our... Okay, I have about 15 minutes left on my battery. Sorry. The, when we walk in a way that's against our conscience... And we, it's against what we know is right and wrong. I mean, we know instinctively God has put that in us to be able to know right from wrong. And the older we get, 
the more we understand really right from wrong. There is a right and there is a wrong regardless of what the culture says today. They've said that for thousands of years. There is no right and wrong. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Well, that's not exactly the case. And so when we go against our conscience, our the Yiddish people call it kishke. When we go against our kishke, our guts of what we know is right or wrong, then we know that we need to repent. That's how we know. And then we understand by the presence of the Holy Spirit who reminds us what the scriptures have said to us, what we have learned about right and wrong, what's right and wrong, what's honoring and what's not honoring, what's honoring to others, what's honoring to ourselves, what's honoring to God. Amen. So we know we might we might ignore we might ignore it, but we know it. So. I love that, that the Holy Spirit is able to do that. that and But even for those who are not born again, who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they have a conscience. They have a kishke. They understand what is right and wrong. This is why repentance is a gift. It restores our life. Repentance restores our life. And it causes us to have a personal revival. I don't know about you, but when I've done something wrong, thought something wrong, said something wrong, and I repent of it, man, I just feel ready to move forward. I just feel clean. I feel, well, I do. I feel clean on the inside. I feel relieved. And I feel relived. Relived. Revived. Amen. So let me make a final statement um, about repentance today. Again, I want you to think about the fact that when Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old, the first thing out of the gate, and he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. After his baptism, after his temptation, he began his ministry, and the first thing out of his mouth was repent. Turn around. Make a big turn around. Burn down your house of sin and return to the house of God. Burn down those temptations of your mind, your mouth, your movements, and return to the safety that is in the arms of our Father God in heaven. So I want you to take down these uh, Bible addresses and I want you to visit them as you think about this concept of repentance and the truth uh, of, of such a, a gift and a blessing that it is. Psalm 51, Luke 3 and 8, Acts 3.19, Luke 15, 1 through 7. And again, we are studying the blessing of repentance. The actual lesson is called Repentance, the Big Turnaround. And I've dubbed it Repentance, the Gift of Repentance. Okay? So that's all we have for the banqueting table today. My name's Diana Green. I'm so glad that you joined me. And until we meet again, may the Lord God of heaven and earth keep you and bless you. Amen.